Hiya, welcome back to the channel. So today, we're working back on the Citroen. I'm doing something that has been a fault on this car since as long as I can remember. Um, and it's not a big fault, it's just a little bit of an annoyance. And when I drive it, I don't know if I can get it to make the noise on cue, but if I... I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but every time I let my clutch up, with any sort of level of aggression, you can hear a clunking. And I will demonstrate what that clunking, or what I think that clunking is. It takes us back round to the front of the shagger. Let's open this bonnet like that. And this might not pick up, but if I grab the engine, mm, it's not moving that much. Now, sometimes when these things go, when the dog bones go, which is what I think the problem is, um, you can rock the engine by hand. Um, and on other cars, it can be more apparent than this. And also on other cars with solid gear linkages, you might feel the gear stick move as you, um, you know, hold onto the gear stick and put your foot down and lift the clutch up the gear stick or like fuck off from underneath your hand or something. But this has got cable um, gear linkages, as pictured. So it doesn't do any of that. But I'm still pretty sure that that's what my fault is. So I'm gonna drive it onto them and have a look. And now I've just taken a couple of thousand miles off that brand new clutch. Let's have a look and see where we are. So from underneath the car, we can see a nice shiny new exhaust that I fitted recently. We can see a gearbox and we can see a gearbox mount there. So that is the dog bone that is in question. Um, so I need to undo, well, two bolts really. I mean, I could take it off with that there, or I could take it off from that there, and that needs to come out. So I, yeah, I need to undo some bolts and remove that. But first, with a pry bar, I will try and demonstrate what the issue is. Um, might not be that easy with one hand, but if I get the bar in there and just move it gently, I'm not even pushing that hard, you can see that that bush is moving quite a lot. If I put the bar in here, you can see the bush very easily moves, more than what it probably should. Now it's not meant to move that way, it's not gonna be very strong that way, because it's designed to cushion back and forth, not not up and down, but still, it does appear that the rubber is weakened. So I'm gonna take the shitter off, for which I require a 19 millimeter socket, which fits on there nice and snug. Ah, an instrument to add force to the socket. Now I'm using a Milwaukee buzz gun, but that isn't the specified unit to use. I mean, you could use a strong arm, you could use a ratchet, you could even use a socket driver if you're very, very strong. But I'm using this because it's easier. And the same for this shitter. Yeah. And then when them two bolts are removed, this I'm hoping does come out of there, but it might not do. Right, now the moment of truth. Does it fit out or do I have to start levering the engine? Nah, it comes out nice and easy. I thought I might have to start barring the engine and fucking about with that, but it's okay, it removes quite easily. So this is our dog bone gearbox mount. And this is completely unrelated to what I'm doing, but I'll just point this out as well while I'm here. So I've got the engine mounting off, so now I can exaggerate quite easily the way the engine moves when torque is applied in either direction. And it does that. You know, it rocks backwards and forwards, not by that much, well, hopefully not by that much, unless it's fucked. But it does do it all backwards and forwards. So that is why we have the spring-loaded exhaust joint here. That allows an amount of flex to happen, if we can see that joint. It allows a bit of flexibility. So I just thought, I just thought that was interesting. It's probably not, but I thought it was, so I just thought I'd mention it. So, back to our mounting, or stabiliser mount, or stabiliser, whatever you want to call it, back to this shitter. And what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to use the Tiger Seal that I bought for the other video that I did recently where I put the scoop on. I'm going to use Tiger Seal to fill in all these gaps around here 
and make it a strength and unit like a race car one. Um, I mean, I could buy another one that's probably cheaper than the Tuba Tiger Seal, but that's boring. So I'm going to waste a lot of time and a lot of money doing it this way. So now it needs a bit of a clean, which is why it is on the floor next to some cleaning apparatus, including degreaser, a hose pipe, and a brush. Go, go, go shower if you're dirty. And this bit, probably self explanatory, really. I'm going to clean it with some strong chemical cleaning agents and the brush. Yes. Now it's been cleaned and carefully rinsed off, and it's drying. The snail leaves is a suitable surface to add the uh, tiger seal to. And all I'm going to do is fill the whole area and pack it out all the way through with this shit. And this is like an uprated, um, it's exactly the same as polybush in this exactly the same effect but cheaper and obviously exactly the same there's no difference with it and the reason why i've got to do this is because of the tuning modifications that this car has had it needs uprated um uprated engine mounting stabilizer to keep the engine from actually jumping out of the bonnet and going into orbit so i'm going to do that and i'm going to neaten it up a bit with my fingers so i've injected the tiger seal onto both sides of the bush and i've i've pushed it in as far as i can with the nozzle, but now I need to get my hands a bit dirty, or my gloves dirty, and force it all the way through until it meets in the middle on both sides and produces one solid, completely solid and indestructible bush. Which leaves us with something like that. So as you can see, it looks like an OEM, an OEM piece of kit that now. And what I need to do is I need to leave that somewhere where the tiger seal isn't gonna seep out and stick it to wherever I put it. So say if I put it on there and it sort of sticks to it with a tiger seal, then it's gonna be stuck to it in it. So yeah, I'll leave that to dry for a few days and I will see, see what it does. And just like that, a few days have passed. So the tiger seal should now be set. And it appears to be. Other things have happened too. We've got a new DIY tattoo, which I'm quite proud of. Um, but this now, if I grab it, it does feel much stiffer in my hand than what it did previously. So, let's put the shitter back on and see if it makes any difference to the drivability of the vehicle. For which, we uh, take comfort back underneath the car. And um, we followed the procedure of what I did to take it off, but in reverse order to fit it. So I need to pull the engine. I need to pull the engine like this enough to get that into there so i might need two hands to do this yes so we can reinsert our boltingtons also sort of self stealth explanatory i might need two hands to do this as well as you can see i'm moving the engine to to line it up but then, I haven't got a spare hand. Let's try struggling for a bit anyway, before I give up and decide to, uh, to just do it like a normal person. I'll try and film it best I can in this very stupid manner. Yes. Great success. All right, and then we get buzz gun, or another means of tightening it up. Then we talk it to spec, so let's make sure that one's started and the same with this one. And now both bolts have reached a specified tightness of fucking tight. Let's get the car off the ramp. And uh Compare. See if it's fixed anything. And now for the moment of truth. 
outside from the gear. And that does seem so far to have cured the knock I was getting. And as I demonstrated earlier on in the video, the issue that I was having, or one of the issues that I was having, was that if I released the clutch with any level of commitment, I'd get sort of like a bit of a banging through. And I'd also get it when I was changing gear as well, but it was most noticeable when setting off. So let's try setting off and see if it has repaired the issue that I was having. And so far, I haven't actually managed to make the same noise as what it was making. It's sort of like a grating bangy noise that you could feel through through the floor of the car a little bit. Um, and I've not managed to get it to do that. It's still doing all the other rattles and bangs that the shitter does. But that particular rattle and bang, it seems to have stopped. So I would say that that is successful um, and it seems to have worked. Um, also, because the engine is braced more securely within the engine bay, instead of the torque, because of the way the engine is made, it's a transverse mounted engine. So the, the torque, equal and opposite reaction and all that kind of crap, it, it pushes the engine the opposite way as well as trying to push the wheels. So instead of the engine just spinning round and round and round inside the engine bay, um, the torque goes through the wheels, so the car is significantly faster, as you can imagine. So I think that's it for this one anyway, unless I run into an issue or something, that engine falls out. Um, I, think, I think that's all for this video. So don't forget to comment, like and subscribe, all the usual bollocks in there. I'll see you next time. Well, I thought that that was it, but I have sort of run into an issue. And it's not an issue as such that's going to cause any issues to be an issue, like causing problems wise, it's just a little bit annoying. Now, I don't know if you can pick this up, but the engine is ticking over. And something that I have noticed since doing the Tiger Seal on the tree, on the engine bush, is that when the car's ticking over, it does vibrate quite a lot more than it did before. So that's the downside of it, but on the plus side, the engine hasn't fallen out yet. So that is now it 